There is nothing wrong with enjoying the fruits of nature. Alrighty then. <laughs>
uh, either be getting away with things or putting the judges in a hard position to make the right call. I think that if you were to do a workout that was very fast, it makes the repetitions a little bit quicker. I think about the Granite Games thruster handstand walk workout where everyone's like sprinting on their hands and they're trying to rail out the 21-15-9 thrusters as fast as they can. And for the most part, a lot of the athletes do a pretty good job on those fast ones, but there are always going to be a couple of repetitions that will, in a workout that is that short, the athletes are trying to push the pace as fast as they can. Quicker workouts like that are always going to be a little bit iffy. And then within these workouts, I also have the standards that are given to these workouts. And the burpee is the best example here. So year after year after year, the burpee standard has been changed. For the longest time, it was two foot takeoff, two foot landing. I think it was 2017, maybe it was 2018.2, whichever the one was with the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 of dumbbell squats and burpees over the bar. A lot of the top level athletes were skewing the line between landing with two feet and landing with like a stutter step. And a lot of the athletes got away with it. And I think there was a lot of hubbub about it. And the, the next year they took away the step on the burpee. So you had to go two feet together on the movement of the burpee, no stepping to no rich froning the burpee and then at some point or another they said that you no longer had to take off with two feet you never had to land with two feet it just had to be a jump over the bar and then that led to the catch and david's daughter it's like is this a jump is that a jump and i said i was going to name names but that's just a perfect example only really big name that we saw doing it for everyone to see at the level of the semifinals in 2021 but yeah there are a whole bunch of reasons when the workouts and the standards given to you to perform those workouts done will affect the standards of the repetitions done by the athletes of course that was my number four. My number three is that some people just don't freaking know what to be looking for. And there's no better example than I had a whole bunch of people reach out to me in relation to a particular athlete doing some wall balls. Like, oh, that was parallel. Oh, that was parable. Oh, that was parallel. It's like, yeah, but the standard is not parallel. It's below parallel. I don't know when CrossFitters became power lifters. If you're looking at somebody and they're squatting, let's say this is their hip and this is their knee. It's like, that's parallel. That's parallel. You gotta see a clear hip crease dip below the knee in order for it to be below parallel. I don't know what you're looking for. Why are a wall ball rep squat repetition different than a overhead rep squat repetition? And why is a single arm dumbbell overhead squat different than a squat clean or a squat snatch? Like the answer is it shouldn't be. A squat is a squat is a squat. It's always been hip crease below the top of the knee. Where's the top of the knee? The knee is over here. Here's the hip crease. It becomes very obvious when somebody performs a correct and good squat. Oh, but the quads are too big on that person. Like, no, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! If the quads are too big, and if anything, if the quads are too big or the leg muscles are too big, they should have an easier time doing better squats. They have more leg mass to be moving through the repetitions. You would figure the athlete with these smaller leg muscles would have a harder time moving through the squat repetitions, no? Is that completely ass backwards to think? I don't think so. Again, my third thing here is that people just don't know what they're looking for. That comes through taking the level ones and looking into the content and having CrossFit from the top down filter feed everybody in a good fashion what it is they're supposed to be looking for. It's one of the things that I've been harping on. They don't really tell you what you're supposed to be doing very much anymore. They used to make these very intricate. This is what 14.1 is supposed to look like. And they no longer tell you exactly what it's supposed to look like. And then like I mentioned in point number four, they're also giving you these cute, confusing fucking standards. Like you don't really have to jump, but you kind of have to jump over the bar on the burpee. And it's very confusing to people. So I call this one knowledge isn't power. Because usually now Knowledge is power, but the more you know, the more confusing it gets, and that's just something from the top down where you're just going to wash away the entire mind space of everybody who's been trying to do CrossFit forever. Nobody knows what to do. Some people still think you have to do a hand release push up in order to do a push up, and then everyone's fighting everybody about, well, we do hand release, do hand release. It's like, no, what year did you come from? Are you new here? Go ahead and flip on the freaking Lowlands, I believe it was, one of those European competition semifinals, and everyone's stepping over the bar, and nobody knows why they're stepping over the bar, and everyone one has to explain to everybody why certain competitions are stepping over the bars like well just so you know this one wasn't crossfit sanctioned and uh they were trying to go for speed and there's too much of an issue it's like remember they do not need to have a two, two foot takeoff they can't step over and that's a technique we've seen most women so far employed well there really was, there really wasn't all that much to gain by jumping 
fuck, dude. It's hard to know so much. Like, simplify it. Dumb it down. There's one way to do a burpee. Two foot takeoff, two foot landing. Idiots. Too easy. So yeah, number three was knowledge is not power, but it should be power. It should be easy for everybody. Number two, we get into the fun ones. And these are the ones that I actually wanted to make this video about in the first place. But number two is that athletes who are aging out are losing their edge and they're trying to keep themselves in the game by shorting the repetitions. Now, some of you guys might think that they've been in the game for so long that they're trying to edge and they're trying to play the game. They're trying to use their experience. So they have a judge right there and they're trying to play to their judge. So if they're doing a whole bunch of wall balls call it 150 of them and they don't have to go inches lower because the judge is giving them the repetitions then why would they go any lower and to be honest can you really blame them would you be going any lower and here's the thing about the crossfit level one that some of you guys may know some of you guys may not know but one of the formulas that they give you is that work done over ranges of motion end up giving you a total work output at the end of the workout so if over the course of 150 wall ball squats you are moving two inches lesser than over the course of that whole workout you did a total of 300 inches of less movement. There's a formula in the Cross of Level 1 guidebook to see how much force and power output you may have saved. And over the course of a workout where you're doing other repetitions, it doesn't compound the same way, so you're not as affected quite as much. And maybe you can finish the assault bike quicker because you moved 300 inches less while doing the wall ball shots. So yeah, athletes who have been in the sport for a while might know that, might be trying to game that, but they also might be trying to use that to their advantage because as you get older, you lose fitness. So if you are a 30 or a 32 year old athlete, you don't, you might not have the exact work capacity that you had as a 26 or a 28 year old athlete. And you might be looking for every single inch that you can get to keep yourself in the game. And there, I'm not saying this is common, but you are probably thinking about an athlete or a couple of athletes in particular where they might be on the back end of their career and you may have seen them doing some things that weren't quite something that you would have seen them doing earlier in their career. This is my opinion why, because they're trying to do things that will keep them in it. Although they're really, in terms of fitness, I look at you as a specimen. You're born, you have a peak level of fitness at a certain age. And once you hit that certain age, you're going to start trickling off just because it's the way the human body works. Now the human body works away, but the human brain doesn't want to accept it. I'm going to keep myself in by any means necessary. And one of those things might be shorting a couple of movements because it ends up keeping you in it in the long run a little bit longer. That's thing number two is that you are losing your edge and you are aging out. And my number one reason that I see a lot of no reps, in my opinion, and a lot of you guys see a lot of no reps is that those aging in have not built a base to be doing the repetitions correctly. And the best way that I can bring this up is the muscle up. In the number five here where I talked about the athletes being too popular, I tried to draw this into the affiliates as well. And a lot of you guys watching this have or will have heard the you should be able to do a certain number of pull-ups or a certain number of push-ups or bench press a certain number of weight before you consider doing a ring muscle up or do a certain number of pull-ups before you do kipping pull-ups. A lot of the times I hear you should be able to do five strict pull-ups before you even consider doing kipping pull-ups. Good coaches will tell you that it isn't the best idea to go directly into kipping pull-ups. Like you will not pass go. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the fruit of nature. All righty then. You know something? You're right. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. That's what the good coaches say. You do not collect $200. And that's because if you go directly into kipping pull-ups, you don't have the structure built up around the shoulder girdle and you don't have the requisite strength to keep yourself protected when you're throwing yourself through the ballistic end ranges of motions that are pull-ups. They're doing it for the benefit of the athletes. Now, when we think about somebody doing a muscle-up, one of the biggest things that you'll see is that pushback away from the rings. We heard Travis Mayer. I made a story about it on my Instagram where he's talking about, what do I do? Last night, I went back and watched all the muscle-ups from the games. No one locks out at the top. None of them. Like, they're all just falling away so I'm like that has to be the difference of like what's really fatiguing me because I'm like every single one of them is like this and I think that's what's frustrating is when it's like oh it's still close I'm like I'm literally pausing at the top of a ring down, and everybody else just falls away I'm, there's some discrepancy somewhere but I don't know what it is I literally went through and watched all the games and everybody that's going fast they're locking out and already falling away I literally hit like a pause and then fall and I think that's just like even yesterday on the 30 that extra like half a second a rep over 30 reps is 15 seconds just holding 
I understand these are harder, but I also understand that I'm never going to get in trouble for doing them this way. At the top of every single muscle up, you see a brief second hold. If you were to be doing 30 muscle ups, that brief second ends up being maybe 15 to 20 seconds, because if you take half a second for 30 reps, it ends up being 15 seconds. That's 15 seconds of a full body support at the top of the rings every single time. If you were to ask an athlete who has not developed the requisite strength to hold that position at the top of the ring muscle up every single time, they just would not be able to do the muscle up. Travis Mayer can do it because he has built the requisite strength. He's a 33 or so year old athlete who has been building and building and building under a good training program being training think tank. And then you've got an athlete who might be 16, 17, 18 years old, or maybe somebody who found the sport at the age of 18, 19, 20, and they're now 22 or 23 years old. And when they need to go do a workout that has 30 ring muscle ups in it, they may not have had hundreds of thousands of push-ups to be able to support themselves at the top of the rings. Because when you're in that support position, it's rather chest heavy and it's rather tricep heavy. It's rather shoulder heavy. And maybe they haven't been doing a long time bench press progression to be able to support themselves at the top of it. So what do they do? They eliminate that support position and they just push themselves away rather than holding for that additional 15 seconds that Travis Mayer had to and having a compound deleterious effect to your ability to do muscle ups. They've completely eliminated that. And in my opinion, this is the absolute worst part. And the muscle up is a great example of somebody, a population of people who have missed the building blocks that are required to get to a certain spot. I was, I had an athlete yesterday that I was working with that asked me the great question, which is why would I overload a squat here if I'm unable to do the squat the right way? And it's perfect. It's exact. It's exactly what you're trying to do. If you can't do a squat the right way, why would you worry about adding weight? If you can't do strict toes to bar, why would you do kipping toes to bar? If you can't do strict handstand pushups or you can't strict press a certain amount of weight, why would you do kipping handstand pushups? Well, the reason you do all those things is because all you're looking to do is hit certain metrics and if CrossFit's going to give you repetitions and if you lock your elbows out on a kipping handstand pushups and you do 50 of them but you couldn't do one strict, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you used your hips and if you're going to be able to get those ring muscle ups where you're pushing yourself away and they're not going to get you in trouble for them and as long as it was somewhere close to locking out then whatever what's going to keep you or what's going to even incentivize you to want to be doing things the right way and say do a one to three year build i don't know if any of you guys know who george sterner is but george sterner was in my opinion the next thing to be the biggest crossfit games athlete of all time he ended up going and doing some stuff with schooling i believe he had a youtube channel he had a podcast and from what i remember listening he wanted to do some huge linear strength build and i'm still waiting for this guy to come out of nowhere and set the world on fire because he had a deadlift issue and he had some upper body strength limitations and every time i see him posting anything it's deadlift tempo work and deadlift linear progression work and upper body bench press strength and strict press strength the dude could snatch almost 300 pounds as an 18 year old i believe and then rather than take the route of shorting everything out and then possibly burning his career out at the age of 24 and 25 he went the route of long-term strength build possibly come back with a bigger base so that he could take everybody down eventually at least that's what i hope he was going for and i hope that the entire world of crossfit hasn't completely fizzled out that correct path because he could have just been in here doing whatever the fuck he wanted for as long as he wanted to throwing himself off the top of the rings and i think that crossfit should be rewarding the george sterners of the world for trying to do things the right way so again if you have anything to say about any of these spots on the list let me know if i missed something let me know if you disagree with something but again it was the athletes are too popular not just at the games level, but also at the affiliate level. That was number five. And number four was that the workouts and possibly the standards given for those workouts were incorrect. Number three was that people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Knowledge isn't power, but it should be power. CrossFit's been confusing for some time. They're trying to figure it out, but it's also been at the detriment of us and the people and the athletes. Blah. Number two is that the older athletes are losing their edge and they're trying to keep themselves in the game. And number one is that the young athletes aren't doing the things they need to do over the long run to to do the repetitions the right way because all they want to do is the repetitions at all. That's the list. Let me know what you think. Andrew Hiller out.